mailbag time. I've got a couple of review items in here. We'll get onto those. I think that's in these two bigger boxes here. So we'll get to them. Several things to get through, so stick around and find out what we got. Ribbon cable and connectors. So these are some little shrouded six pin connectors. And 50 pin, is it? Yeah, 50 pin ribbon cable. So if you want to make your own cables up, you can just get some of this stuff, tear off what you need. I think I've got one meter here, is it? Yeah, one meter. Useful for hooking things up. I mean, these don't really get used that much these days. Things are very different in modern times. But some equipment I work with still needs this kind of thing. So, links down below. There will be links down below for anything I can give you links for. So if there's anything that you see which you like the idea of getting some, or something similar to that, go and check those links out down below in the description. So here we have some little 5mm LED lenses. So basically you push this through a casing and that will lock in and it gives you an option of having a LED shining through the side of the casing without having a hole. Just nice trims. These are relatively cheap to get actually. It took a while to find this particular type. I did find another one which had like a diffusion ring on it as well. They kind of okay but they weren't exactly what I wanted for the job. I needed ones to be transparent like this one. I managed to find some of these, finally. I might buy even more of them. If you excuse the noise, I've got the 3D printer running in the background. Hopefully you don't hear it, but you might do. These are some 2.2 ohm resistors. Half a watt metal film. 1% uh, tolerance. I realised I was getting a bit low on these. I only had like 10 left, so I thought I'd better get some more. I use these for repairs on certain items. Bag inside a bag inside a bag. This is brilliant. I think these are basically the same thing anyway. So these are some programmers. Now what did I get these for? I actually don't remember. I needed programmers for something to go from JTAG. Ah, right, now I remember. I remember now. Oh, that's really tight on there. That's a really tight plug. I can't get the thing in there. Right, I have to look at that. But it's basically a little USB programmer for JTAG devices. It's got two jumpers on there. Oh, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, okay, that's fine. I've got two of them. I always get two. I always have a spare. Always have a spare. <laughs> Because if you find something you actually like, then it breaks, then you don't have one anymore. Because by the time you go to get one again, you don't make them anymore. So I always get two of everything, basically. I only ever have one wife, though. Having two wives, eh, complicated. Anyway, I imagine it's complicated. <laughs> Mind you, I think there's some places that actually allow that. Hmm. <clears throat> so, I needed to program my Retro Chip Tester Pro. I'm still running the original firmware on that. I haven't updated it. And it's had many updates since I got that thing. So I think it's about time I actually did an update on it. But then I realised I don't have a ISC programmer. Um, I mean, I'm sure I could have made one with an Arduino Uno and some cables and so on. I could have easily done that. But I thought, no, I think I'll get a proper programmer. I'm not in a particular rush to get this done. That goes in there at least. Yeah. So I can plug this into the computer, hook this up to the programmer, hook it up to the device, jump into the Arduino IDE, maybe, <laughs> and dump a bin file onto it. That's the hope, anyway. So when I was looking at this ISC programmer thing, and the Arduino Uno is what I could have used to do it manually myself, I realised I actually had very few in some cases none of these other plug sizes so I've got a few different sizes here um, what we've got there these are 6 pin these are 8 pin but that's why I got those on because I didn't actually have any of these sizes yeah I think the lowest pin count I actually had was a 10 I didn't have anything less than that so I've got 8 and 6s because those might get used and the situation come up but I actually needed some 6s didn't have them now I've got them so I'll take a minute to thank my Patreon members and my YouTube members that help to support the channel. P 
PoE detector. Someone else had this, I can't remember who it was now. I saw it on a YouTube channel. I thought, oh yeah. Well, maybe it wasn't this exact one, but it was something like this, a PoE detector. And you can check the various PoE states. So if you're using PoE systems, you can plug this in and actually tell you what mode it is. So passive 24 volt, passive 48 or 56 volt. Flashing is IEEE 802.3 AFAT. And red solid is reversed, but backwards. Don't want that. Nice and simple and easy to use. I didn't actually have a nice way of testing PoE for, well, in a safe way, apart from plugging something into it. So as I was saying before, I want to thank my supporters because they helped me to buy things from bag and to uh, buy test equipment to repair and make videos about, which is getting really expensive and it's getting more and more challenging to buy things. I'm having a real hard time. Actually, while I'm thinking about this, Ian Scott Johnson put an appeal out for test equipment. If you have test equipment you don't want, which is broken, which is not too old, anything valve based, not interested. Well, probably not interested. 80s, 90s, 2000s equipment probably. You know, you see the equipment I fix on my channel. Something of those kind of eras. Um, if you've got some of that which you don't want, which is potentially broken and potentially fixable, I'm interested in acquiring some equipment. I'm finding it really hard to buy stuff. It's just getting too ridiculously expensive. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm happy to pay shipping. I want basically free equipment if I can, but I'm, I'm willing to pay money for it too if it's a reasonable price and it's something which I would probably want to buy it myself anyway. If you've got anything which you think I may be interested in, please do get in contact with me. Leave a comment down below if you want, or possibly use the about page link on the top of, up there somewhere, um, and it will, you can get my email address in there, or one of my email addresses, and you can email me through there and uh, contact me and we can have a discussion about what options there are whether it's something I'm interested in or not I'm certainly am looking for a test gear to do whether I take it up on the offer I don't know yet but it depends on what the gear is what's wrong with it potentially so anyway what we got here I saw these somewhere else too these are some little connectors which go on the end of your test leads it's a magnet so if you're hooking up to something which has got magnetic contacts on it, such as screw studs, you can hook this up and you can leave your leads hooked up to it and it'll make a connection of some kind. Let's see if you have to hold your leads on there. It could be safer for a start, but I saw someone else had these. I thought, oh, actually, that's not a bad idea. I should get some of those. I mean, it's been times, well, plenty of times where I wish I had a lead attached to something. I mean, even if you like the negative one, like if you're working on a car, you could maybe attach this to a bolt somewhere and you know, stick it onto a bolt to get your negative side. Then you can program your lead. Or if you want to try and monitor something, maybe you do want that. But yeah, cool. These weren't too expensive. Pretty simple things, really. Basically, you test through the magnet on the end of it. But yeah, could be handy. My favourite thing. Oh, I did make one mistake though. I only bought one pair. I should have bought two pairs. I'm not quite sure where all the. Uh, Flaps and stuff are on it. I just want to keep cutting until I find where they all are. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> ah, right. Okay. Tom Huey TH two six zero one one AS. So I've got a couple of these sorts of fixtures. For the LCI meters, I've got one with like um, SMD tweezers and things like that, and also got, recently got one where you can put things into the part. I've got one on the Agilent meter up there, which I did a repair on recently, and I saw these ones online. So these look like quite nice clamps. They look quite nice. So this also meant for an LCI meter. Most equipment, like the other version I do here, has only got two, and I just leave the outer covers off, so those push in, and then these ones hold it down. So I'm quite surprised that they've got four levers, means you've got to try and move four levers over at the same time. It's not that big a deal, but I'm surprised you've got a different setup. But these are making some quite nice stuff. I mean, I, th I think they actually do an LCI meter as well. They do a few things. And apparently the quality is quite good. They do seem to be making some nice stuff. So I wanted to get a new clip lead fixture, because I'm currently using a different setup on my other meter here. And I thought I'd try getting something like this. Just something a bit nicer. Be useful. I'm not quite sure what the configuration set up for in here. Show you a look. Let's take the cover off and have a look inside it. 
see how it's wired up. You know, you'd assume that each wire center conductor goes to these, it may not be. This one here, each one goes to each side of these fingers. So you've got the two low ones go to those two, those two go to those two. And the device joins the, together in that slot. So that's how that one works. But other ones, like this HP one here, Agilent one, 16143B, which I recently repaired, this is wired up differently. So center conductor on here has got no connection. It relies on the connection on the actual meter itself. You have to watch out for that kind of thing. So don't assume that because you've got four connections on the fixture that they go straight through to the probes. Always check. Let's get this screw out. See somewhere. Here we go. Seems like sacrilege to be opening up a brand new piece of equipment, but uh, anyway. Let's have a look. How's it wired up? So the shielded cables, the shields are going to the casing, and each wire is going to each terminal. Okay, that's how they're wired up. That's kind of what you'd expect, but it's not always the case. Let's see what we've got in here. I believe they're both review items anyway. I'm expecting two things to turn up. So that's what I think they are. Yep, that is definitely one of them. So this is the Kiwi external imaging camera, KTI W01. Kiwi got hold of me the other day and said, would you like to review the thermal camera? I thought, sure, why not? They actually were happy for me to compare it to my existing thermal camera and that sort of stuff, which is probably something we've done anyway, but they're happy for that. Ooh, interesting packaging. So, what's in here? Stuff in here. What's in here? Well, it's actually got a proper manual. Lots of languages. They're actually onto the effort of printing a proper manual. That's not that common these days, you don't get that very often. Only higher quality equipment. So that's actually quite nice to see. Okay. Cameras in here. What's, something, what's in this end? Cables. Oh yeah, they just tell me about this. They didn't have the right charger in stock for me, for my country. And I said, that's fine. It's just a USB charger anyway. Output's 5 volts, 2 amps. Not a big deal, common thing. So, charger and cable, that's fine. But well, we're doing a proper review on this, so thanks for Kyrie sent this to me at no cost. And when I review this, obviously I'll be covering it in a lot more detail. Well, just a quick look at it. This bit of a teaser. Nice. Fold up cover. Nice lens cover built in. Excellent. USB port under there. Alright. Watch out for that review. We're coming out very soon. I've just done a review yesterday and I've got more to do. Obviously I've got this and I've got another item which hopefully is this big box here. So I'm a bit flat out with videos, mate. I'm trying to do three videos a week for a few weeks in a row, which is challenging. Let's see how it goes. Watch out for that review coming out. We'll get to have a close look at it and see how it performs compared to my existing camera, which I've had for a few years now. So maybe technology's moved on a bit further from where it was. That camera where I got it was already pretty good. That's Unity 260 was on a company exactly was. But when I got that one that was a massive jump up from what I had already. I'm hoping this will be another improvement. Whether it is or not, I don't know, we'll find out. Okay, what's in this one? I think it's a review item as well. Yes it is. Okay, let's get it out of here. Double boxed. So it's a AP camera tester. This is a company called RSRT ENG, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, RSRT, RSRT Engineering, I don't know, but um, that's who it's from. So they again sent this to me at no cost, so thank you very much. They contacted me, they'd seen that I'd previously reviewed a camera tester, and so they thought maybe I'd be interested in looking at one of their products. This is one of the, the higher end ones, which is quite nice. This is the one I chose, and after a bit of discussion with them, they agreed to send me this one. Apparently also they got a voucher, discount code for purchasing all these things. So this can test all sorts of stuff. And again, there'll be a proper review for this. I'll be doing a dedicated review. A bag with manual in the back, is it? Yep, proper printed manual, another one. Oh, full English. Everything's English. That is a massive manual, and it's all English. That's really good. That's brilliant. That's a really good start. Now I just have to actually read the thing. <laughs> Uh, in the front pocket here, they've got the actual tester, I think. 
This does all kinds of things. It's got a screen protector on it. There you go. Massive screen. It's also got a built-in multimeter. So it's got all sorts of functionality in it. It's got Wi-Fi testing, electrical testing with multimeter options. It's also got all the CCTV stuff. It's also got optical, something I don't have a lot of experience with, but optical is good here as well if you use optical systems, fiber systems. Unfortunately, I don't have any fiber systems here. SD card, HDMI output, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, this would be a really uh, interesting thing to look at. I think this could be quite a long, in-depth review. I've got to cover a lot of stuff with it. It's got a belt and battery pack inside there. Big battery, which is replaceable, potentially. Nice, and also you got a stand there as well so we've got a uh <laughs> got a thing there for the screen great okay so that's really nice um it's really well presented so like i said a bit of voucher code for that which they've given me so that'll be part of the review i might even stick it down below got a cable testing probe thing multimeter leads other probes shoulder strap charger cool loads in there loads and loads brilliant so you've got a lot to look at with this one it's going to take a while to test it with them because it does a lot and the model of this one is the x9 mov t a d h s pro so i'd love you to check out those reviews when they come out be soon be one after the other i'll be doing this one first i think i'm not sure i'll be doing one of them first i'm not sure probably do this one first because that's the quickest one to record this one's going to take much longer time, so I'll get that one out. So in the next two or three weeks, you should see this review. Maybe this week, I don't know. Could be this week, next week, week after. Man, that's all time. Watch out for that. Of course, if you're watching this in the future, so I'm in the past, then it may have been last week, or a month ago, or a year ago. I don't know. You, you decide. Look at the date. That's why I've got the mailbag dates on there. <laughs> it's all relative. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Up there somewhere. And also up there is a Patreon support link if you want to help me to buy stuff from our bag and to buy test equipment to fix and do with repairs on in videos. Thanks to Iris RT in ENG and Kai Weeks for sending me his products to review. So it's always good having things for content. Okay, so later.